I noticed that a lot of kids nowadays, they feel like the government doesn't really listen to them. Do any of you feel that your government doesn't listen to you? Like by show of hands. Wow, that's a lot. My name is Chelsea Reyes. My name is Kevin Douglas. My name is Emily Stewart, and we've been working on our intergenerational documentary called Face Your Freedoms. We're on Roosevelt Island, currently at the Four Freedoms Park Memorial. The park was designed by Louis Kahn in 1973, and it was finished in 2012. It's also a memorial to FDR and the Four Freedoms. There was Four Freedoms that FDR emphasized in his State of the Union address in 1941. In the future days which we seek to make secure, we look, look forward to a world founded upon our four essential human freedoms. The, the first, first is freedom of speech and expression everywhere, everywhere in, the world. in the world. The second is freedom of every person to worship God in his own way everywhere, everywhere in, in the, the world. world. The third is freedom from want everywhere, everywhere in, the world. in the world. The fourth is freedom from fear anywhere in the world. Those are definitely four essential human rights that we should all have, and the park really embodies that whole message. Out of the four freedoms, the one that I connect to the most is freedom from fear, because fear plays into all the freedoms. Fear is definitely a key player in what people think about all the time. Our whole group of summer interns came to the park one day, and we just talked about how fear affects our lives. A lot of people are scared to say what they're actually feeling and that it gives more power to the, you know, the dictators and all the people with higher powers that are using that to their advantage. It could get up to a point in which we will get so afraid that we'll be willing to like, let go of all of our freedoms. It's our responsibility to be the future leaders, to inspire future leaders. And we've been making a documentary on senior citizens who've lived through the FDR era and they have a lot of stories to tell us. And we're using these stories to inspire the younger generation to be more active and educate them about government and how much of an impact they really do have in our lives. My name is Sybil Shanewald, and I grew up in New York City. My name is June Terry. I grew up in Washington, D.C. My full name is Edward Sommerfeld. I grew up here, over here in Manhattan. I go by Virginia. I grew up in Detroit. When I was in college, FDR was the president. And I remember listening on the radio to his fireside chats. He was a role model for the people. And people really related to him. And people were anxious to listen to him. He had a beautiful voice. And it was very clear. You know, he had a very lovely, melodic tone. It was not gruff, it was not weak. My friends, and you are my friends. When he said that you have nothing to fear but fear itself, that was very important. Well, freedom feared. In those days, it was freedom from war. War. Mm -hmm. And well, the general loss that people had of, of living a normal life would be another thing that's related to it, that they didn't have jobs and were hungry and couldn't feed their children, that kind of fear. He had a real impact. Economically, the country was in the midst of a depression. There were many stories of, of uh, the effects of the depression on people. That was something I, I saw constantly wherever I went. And uh, they would come to your door with practically nothing, wanting, asking you for a quarter. Even as much as a quarter, anything would help them. There was people who did not have food and did not know how to survive. There was a, a minister named Father Divine. He fed multitudes of people. For 25 cents, you could get a meal. And people stood in line. And that was the first time you saw black and white in the same line because they wanted food too. And if you didn't have 25 cents, you would take 15 cents or whatever you had. FDR started to put jobs together for the people. He got us out of the depression. He was an uplifting force, major uplifting force for this country. It wasn't really the depression that affected my family. It was the war. I think the war taught me a lot because I saw people go away to service 
and I saw half of people coming by. We all knew a, a relative, a neighbor, a friend, a loved one that had to go and serve the country. You know, this is a country that even today, when you look at it, it's divided in many ways. But once we were attacked, we all got together with a common cause. I think that people had confidence in their government and confidence in him and confidence that he could make the world better for them. What does freedom mean to me? Freedom to me, it means uh, to live where you want to live, no matter what you are, who you are. Freedom means to do what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it, and just do it. That's freedom. The four freedoms would be the freedom of speech and expression, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. Wow, I wish we had that. It's beautiful. It just didn't work. <laughs> if he came back, what would he say? He would say, I, I can't believe it. <laughs> you people listen to me all those years. The four freedoms, I think they stand the test of time. I don't think we've lost the, the, that goal. That's what we're, we want to keep and improve upon and accept. Everyone should have the right to all of those freedoms. Well, I'm hoping for the young people to try to go back in history and try to learn from there. I hope the younger people will go and read that over and again. That should be in every classroom. Young people like yourselves, we can't think of yourselves just as an individual. It's got to be good for everyone. People don't communicate. They're on their iPhones all the time. That's that communication. Sitting, talking, thinking together is very important. Study. Get off the smartphone. Go to lectures. Read books. And try to, you know, think for yourself. If I was a politician, what would I do? You just have to be aware of what your government is doing. You have to be well read. You've got to get involved in the politics, you've got to get involved with the people running the country, and uh, it's very important to, to work and change them if you can. If you are confident in yourself and you believe that you can move mountains. Yeah, you should run for office. As long as you uh, participate in some way and you look out for uh, other people and you make sure that there is more justice in our society, you'll add to the good of the country and the good of your souls. I just want you to keep fighting for yourself and for others. I do think those freedoms will be met someday. I don't think we fully achieved that yet, because if we have, then we would have been a perfect society at this point. I really do think that because of the precedent that FDR established with four freedoms, freedom of speech, worship, freedom from fear, freedom from want, those four freedoms are things that we still hold close to us today. Going to meet these people and interview them and just simply just hearing their stories, that was my favorite part. I think this year is the year where I truly understand like what I'm actually voting for and what I'm doing and what American politics are and who's representing me. Like before I never really stood up for my political beliefs or really just had a voice and I think this summer really changed that and now I can call my representatives, I can vote next year and I think that'll really make a difference. As a democracy, we have a say in every part of our lives. We should be educated on our government and how they affect us so that we can be a part of those decisions. You need to be informed because you want to form your own political opinion so you know where you stand when it comes time to vote. I hope that after watching the film, our viewers will feel empowered enough to actually go out and do something, take action, not just feel it, but turn that feeling into action. Let fear drive our future generations to take a stand against those who think we know nothing. If you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. Take these four freedoms, expression, worship, want, and fear, and never let them be left behind.